guys after subscribing to this channel please make sure that you also press the bell icon so that no notification no new video of mine any educational video is missed by anybody so all right guys i welcome everyone uh, for uh, the class today and we have a case presentation on twin pregnancy now this is a very very long case you don't know how much can i ask you and i can go on and on and on and on but i'm trying to restrict myself basically to the important salient points which will be asked in your examination at your level okay this is a very very uh, elaborate topics so a lot of researches a lot of studies have come on different things but um, i'll be restricting myself to the questions that will be asked to you at your stage all right and i welcome lavanya to uh, be presenting this case so uh, lavanya over to you and here here comes your first slide yes yes ma'am uh so my patient mrs x wife of mr y who is a business member profession uh age is 30 years uh, resident of delhi uh she is a graduate belongs to upper middle class by modified cooper formic classification her last menstrual period is uh, 5th of december 2023 and the expected date of delivery is uh, 12th of uh, september 2024 by lmp by her regular menstrual cycles and the period of gestation is uh, 35 weeks 3 days by her last menstrual period and uh, she is a primary gravida okay fine yes uh presenting complaint uh, primary gravida with uh, eight eight months uh, 8.5 eight and of months amenorrhea with twin pregnancy came with complaint of pain abdomen with uh, leaking per vaginum since 6 hours she's having pain and she's also having leaking since 6 hours leaking okay. yes ma'am mm-hmm. history of presenting complaint patient came with complaint of lower abdominal pain since morning 5 am pain in lower abdomen radiating to her back intermittent in nature mild intensity with no aggravating and relieving factors for the pain also she have this complaint of leaking per vaginum along with pain abdomen and uh, she told like fluid like urine coming mm. out uh, per vaginum and it is not greenish or black or red and uh, there is no uh, associated bleeding per vaginum no history of vaginal white discharge or foul smelling discharge previously no history of bubble and bladder complaint or no history of any infection okay okay so this is all about your uh, uh, pain and leaking history all right now when the patient is leaking she is very categorically told you that the fluid is like urine uh, very important distinguishing factor between uh, you know excessive discharge and uh, leaking per, uh, per vagina how do you differentiate these two copious discharge because uh, you sometimes they have watery discharge especially towards the end they have a lot of discharge coming so suppose you have to ask them specifically whether it is a copious amount of discharge which has increased or it is leaking per se then what do you how do you put this question ma'am uh, we will ask them the uh, consistency and uh, whether it is uh, uh, amount it is, uh, is amount it? yes ma'am hmm. so it was come hmm. as a gush Okay, it's come as a gush, yes. and it's like gush. So all, yes. you know, you've been asking this question since a long time, since in your OPD, mm-hmm. and emergency is when the patient comes to an emergency. That did it come immediately like a gush of flow, and it soiled all your clothes and your bed and everything that you were sitting on, or it was just slight coming slightly and was uh, sticky in consistency, and it keeps mm-hmm. coming off and on, just about to or just enough to soil your undergarments. That is the way to ask these two questions. That will be your differentiation between copious discharge or uh, leaking per vagina. And as far as the pain is concerned, it's very categorical. At this point in time, with twin pregnancy at 35 weeks, we are expecting her to go in labor. So this is not about the DD. It's more about the uh, you know uh, factors to understand that whether she is going into frank labor with leaking. It's almost uh, synergistic, and now we are probably thinking in terms of labor only. Correct. So uh, she's a twin twin patient. I mean, with a twin gestation, and uh, yes. I think she said that to you. Yes, ma'am. Did she say that anywhere? Twin pregnancy here. Yes, ma'am. She, she said, said that, because okay. yes, ma'am. She knew so, that. She was talking to her, and she told you that it's a twin. Uh, yes, ma'am. Patient. And she's uh, been around eight and a half months pregnant, and now mm. she has come to you with complaint of. Um, pain abdomen and leaking pain abdomen along with leaking all right fine. yes so we go back to her uh, first trimester history yes yes ma'am 
uh, first trimester it says spontaneous conception non consanguineous marriage it he is a book good case her uh, urine pregnancy it is positive at 2 months of amenorrhea followed by ultrasound done around 2 uh, end of months and confirmed intra uterine twin pregnancy and uh, both the uh, uh, fetus of were live with cardiac activity okay guys now it's my is a question to my students who are watching i want to know from all of you what becomes the most important thing in the first trimester patient might might not tell you but you got to uh, establish it in the first trimester she's a book case all right so what is the most important few parameters i would want to find out in the first trimester itself especially if it's a twin pregnancy quickly guys i need this answer because i'm sure everybody knows this answer i just want you to answer me fada fada and then uh, if you're not able to answer it fully then lavan is going to answer so what do you want to know in the first trimester itself specifically in a case of twin pregnancy what all things do you really need to know in the first trimester about this patient she is a book case okay she is a spontaneous conception it's a non consanguineous marriage these are important terms okay because had she not been a book case you would miss out that thing yes for your honesty most important fact and why do you want to know the curiosity lavanya ma'am depending on curiosity further monitoring surveillance and uh, decision uh, all depends on this curiosity absolutely so a lot depends upon uh, and yes usha has pointed out absolutely clear that we want to also date this pregnancy why do we mm-hmm. want to date this pregnancy and why is it so important because all the time throughout the pregnancy you will find the gestational age the surprise of light more than the dates more than the dates all the time mm-hmm. and you will have this obviously with a twin pregnancy this is very it goes without saying but at the same time twin pregnancy the dating is even more difficult so what do we have, what do we have to do is that we have to make it show in the first sitting itself that was a dating about a presental location about the curiosity the most important actually which i was the reason why i was asking is the curiosity all right was she also uh, subjected to the aneuploidy screening yes ma'am she uh, did this aneuploidy uh, screening also combined the uh, testing screening test okay guys one student has uh, asked the link to join just can anybody please uh, help her out any one of you in the class she vipan she is there she wants to join the class just type down or something all she has to do is just click on the message which is showing it shows not join the class does it show or not it will not show on the chat it will show in the main group i guess right avanya does it show yes, in the main ma'am. group or does it show in the chat group where does it show chat chat group also ma'am upside the uh... yeah the join thing is there na yes ma'am yes i don't know all right just uh, help her out somebody please all right so uh, uh, i was asking you about uh, this uh, this thing dating and all about the uh, first trimester what all screening is important and uh, uh, most important is about the aneuploidy screening so yeah what we are saying uh, lavanya regarding the uh, aneuploidy screening yes ma'am combine the screening test so it include maternal age uh, and tnb scan and uh, biochemical markers yes so why don't we go directly uh, with nipt then that ma'am uh, nipt uh, yeah why is it not yes. important enough for your first trimester because it's a screening anyways why not nipt Ma'am, maternal serum will collect uh, maternal serum for NIPT, so it may show elevated values levels also. So because of that, answer, okay. Answer is beta. See, what happens is that in monochorionic pregnancy, it's still okay because both the uh, you know um, hmm. uh, the uh, same twins have got the same uh, you know placental uh, cells of the same origin, right? So it has hmm. most mostly what you're doing with NIPT is that you're taking the maternal serum. So obviously, maternal cells are there. Number one, and the fetal cells are there. Now, mm-hmm. with the monochorionic pregnancy, you can still go ahead and do NIPT because it's taking the cells from the same placental origin, origin of the placenta. It's the same for both, right? It's monochorionic. Mm-hmm. But with dichorionic, mm-hmm. you will not know which cell is from which twin. Mm-hmm. So, if mm-hmm. there is an aneuploidy, actually, it's so difficult with NIPT, for, especially for dichorionic pregnancies, because if the cell is abnormal, you do not know which twin is abnormal, right? Mm-hmm. the cell has come from both the placenta one of them has aneuploidy the other one is not uh, no aneuploidy but with twins is aneuploidy more or less usually what is incidence the chance of aneuploidy with twins is more so you have to yes. be even more sure with the aneuploidy screening of the twins and what is the um, preferred method of aneuploidy for the twins is 
the integrated marker or the combined marker. The combined marker is in which you uh, see the uh, maternal age along with the uh, dual marker along with the NT NB scan. Correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. So these were very important parts of uh, the first trimester. We needed to say about the spontaneous conception. We wanted to talk about the non consanguineous marriage. We wanted to talk about booking history. We wanted to know about the aneuploidy screening. And we needed to know about curiosity. That's very, very important. What about second trimester? Okay, you have some more about it. So you, okay, you can finish off this thing. Yes, ma'am. So there is no history of any radiation exposure and she took her folic acid supplementation. There is a history of excessive nausea and vomiting till three months of pregnancy. There is a history of bleeding per vaginum in first trimester, which are conservatively managed with bed rest and supporting injections. And uh, first trimester scan was done, which is NTNB scan. It was found to be normal and uh, corresponding with dates. Uh, she was informed about chorionicity after ultrasound as uh, two placenta and two sacs. And there is no history of any chills, fever, with or without rash. Okay, so that means she mm. knows that it is, this is two placenta and two. Whenever it is two placenta, it has to be dichorion, correct? Yes, It is dichorion amniotic, so it's mm. the least risk uh, twin pregnancy, so we are safe. Okay, what about second trimester? What all in specifically second... we have to see in the second trimester level? Uh, yes, ma'am. So there is, uh, uh, she uh, she took this uh, oral glucose tolerance test and it is it was normal. It was said to be normal. And ultrasound anomaly scan was done, which was also normal. And there is no history of uh, complaint of uh, uh, shortness of breath, weakness or easy fatigability. Mm -hmm. And she is in her regular follow-up visit with the regular BP monitoring, which was normal at, in the second trimester visits. So, Lavanya, suppose I ask you to tell me mm. or ask her any, uh, you know, um, direct leading questions regarding her mm. second trimester complications. Which direct leading questions would you ask? About the things which we are concerned about in the second trimester. Yes, ma'am. So, if there is any shortness of breath or easy fatigability, and if there is any headache, uh, blurring of vision or um... yeah see you have any history of high bp any history of anemia mm -hmm. low see everybody anemia, anemia. Yes. okay uh, any development mm -hmm. of uh, you know deranged sugars or any test that came out mm -hmm. deranged what was your thyroid mm -hmm. state was it okay or not then whether mm -hmm. you had an anomaly scan which you already mentioned okay most mm -hmm. of the things you've already mentioned but these are leading questions which i'm concerned about in a twin pregnancy uh, for the second trimester. Suppose she'd been a monochorionic twin pregnancy and you, she did not say, you did not know and she was coming very frequently for visits. Then in mm. that case, you would automatically get to know that she was probably a monochorionic pregnancy. Otherwise, why would we call her that often, mm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that yes. I'll ask you later on that had she been a monochorionic, monochorionic pregnancy, what would you do? Mm. Uh, okay, let's, let's finish out here only. What about uh, the frequency of visits for a dichorionic and a monochorionic pregnancy? How do you do that? Yes, ma'am. If it is dichorionic, uh, uh, once in four weeks, uh, we can ask her, her for follow-up. If it is a monochorionic, from 16 weeks, we have to call her every two weekly because mm -hmm. complication risks were more in monochorionic for pregnancy. Which exactly complication are you trying to look forward to in a monochorionic pregnancy that you're calling her from 16 weeks and that to every two weekly? Ma'am, twin to twin transfusion syndrome is more common in monochorionic. That too, in the time period of 16 to 20 weeks. So, so I yes. like to call her. Yes. Yes. Most of the complications, um, they can develop late, but TTTS, if at all, it develops, it develops very early. And the moment the patient is uh, into TTTS early on, we still have scope of managing this patient. The moment it becomes more and more dangerous, either one twin becomes hydropic or the twin dies. And that's too late to save the patient or the baby, I'm sorry, the baby, right? So what's very important for us is that we start early and we follow up the patient very well, very, very tightly. So that the moment these complications have started developing, we are able to intervene and save the patient. Now we have so much of, uh, you know, fetal medicine fellows are there. We have good uh, diagnostic setups. We have good uh, surgical hands and we have minimal invasive surgery. How many of you were there in my fetal therapy class, guys, earlier on, very early on, I took this class in which I spoke about all these, uh, you know, interventional uh, processes 
I described to you the different interventions, uh, uh, the same processes which were which are there given in your Williams very poorly. It describes that yes, these are the different processes which are there, but it does not describe properly what these uh, processes are. So I uh, at that time, obviously now many more things would have probably come on the net or something, and they would have been. Um, they are of course important for you to understand through uh, videos. Earlier on, there were no videos when I started making these classes. So many graphical videos were not available. So it was very difficult for me to make the class, but I still, still do remember. That it was a very fulfilling class because it, it, were, it described to you such intricacies which were not given in your book properly. So there was a confusion between percutaneous procedures and then interventional procedures and uterine manipulations, you know, exit therapy. And I remember describing and explaining to you regarding the intricacies of each procedure. So in the same way, now you, now you have such a vast array of uh, interventional processes that you have time. If you pick the thing on time, you're able to intervene and give her a healthy baby finally at the end of the day. You might, it might recur. There is a good recurrence rate also. Like for example, TTTS and the selective fetal growth restriction. The, uh, uh, you know, incidence of both these is 15, 15% each. It's very high. You can't call 15, 20% as less. So 15% is the chance of development of TTS in a monochorionic pregnancy. And 15% is also the chance of development of selective fetal growth restriction, both of which are associated with a very high mortality if they're not picked up at the, center, at the right time. That is why we are calling every the monochorionic pregnancy every two weekly. And that also be starting at such early stage. We're not calling her after 20 or 24 weeks. We're calling her from 16 weeks on. And the answer is absolutely right. That it's basically because TTTS develops very early on. And now she's in the third trimester. So you know how third trimester is important in the um, in the twin uh, gestation. Yes. Lavanya, yes. Carry on. So in her third trimester, she had spotting pervaginum around seven months, for which she was admitted in hospital for close monitoring. At the time of admission, DEXA coverage was given, blood sugar charting was done, and she was kept on diet control. And after 48 hours, so she was discharged from the hospital. There is no history of any blood or IV intravenous iron transfusion. In her eighth month, patient have raised BP readings and started on treatment. Uh, that she told that the labital was 200 mg twice a day. There is no history of headache, blurring of vision and epigastric pain. As per the patient, her liver function tests were also abnormal and started on tablet uh, thrice, a time, thrice a time today. So she is taking uh, Lobet right now? Yes, ma'am. So she's a case of uh, preeclampsia as well? Preeclampsia, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Or uh, what about her uh, this thing, sugars? Are they settled now? Yes, ma'am. She on uh, diet control, medical nutrition therapy, She her sugars were normal now. Mm -hmm. And is yes. she taking something for her uh, cholestasis as well? Liver test for abnormal? Yes, ma'am. So she is taking a tablet. Later on, I asked you to live. She is taking thrice a day. Thrice or twice? Thrice. Okay. Thrice, yes. Okay, all right. Now, guys, just tell me all of you. It's a quick uh, survey. How many of you have uh, you admit the patient for a steroid cover and you uh, put her on insulin regime? Because usually, with uh, when you're giving a patient uh, DEXA cover or a metabolism cover, uh, you do have this sugar derangement. Okay, that's established. So how many of you do this monitoring and then give her insulin and then tide over that episode and then, then you discharge her and you admit that patient? How many of you are doing that in your institute, guys? It's just a quick survey. Uh, just give me a thumbs up if you're doing and thumbs down if you're not. That, that at least you can do. And I want a good answer, yeah, guys. Come on. How many of you are there? Let me see. 